Hey guys, what's up? This is Nain here from Tech Barrack Solutions and today we are gonna do a new Linux tutorial. Uh, well, basically in this Linux tutorial, we will learn how we can install the Ubuntu operating system on a machine running Windows operating system. So what are the requirements? First, we need a Windows personal computer or a machine running Windows. Second, we need the ISO file of Ubuntu operating system. Now, those who are new to this, and don't know what is an ISO file just giving a basic information about ISO I would rather say that it is a compressed file format which contains all the setup files and this kind of file, file format is usually used for games and operating systems and almost any software that you will find in the market and third we need a bootable disk or a bootable pen drive which has the Ubuntu operating system files loaded into it so that we can install the Ubuntu operating system on our Windows personal computer or Windows running machine. So first, the, the, the first step that is having a Windows personal computer or a Windows running machine, we already have that. Second, we need an ISO file. So from where can we get the ISO file? Well, it's very simple. Just go to ubuntu.com and when you go to ubuntu.com, you should have a download section on the top just click on it and then you have various options that is Ubuntu desktop, Ubuntu server, cloud infrastructure. Now Ubuntu desktop is all is a operating system for all those users who are doing basic stuff like reading mails, creating documents or doing multimedia stuff like creating good videos for YouTube or doing some gaming stuff like game, playing games like Counter Strike or Call of Duty, any game. So that's Ubuntu desktop and Ubuntu server is basically for those who want to have their own server for their website or who want to have manage some databases for online um, data management etc. And cloud infrastructure is having all your data in the cloud and all that stuff. So we'll go for Ubuntu desktop because I'm a normal user. And after that it will give you an option to choose your flavor. Now depending on the bit of your operating of your personal computer like let's say I'm having a 64-bit operating system so I will go for 64-bit if you are having a 32-bit go for 32-bit so click on start download and Ubuntu should start downloading so it shows us and depending on your internet connection speed it should take that much amount of time once you download the file it should look something like this Ubuntu version number desktop AMD 64 whatever whatever dot ISO Once the first three steps have been completed successfully, we will proceed to the installation of Ubuntu operating system on a Windows computer, personal computer or a Windows running machine. You need to open up the CD tray of your Windows personal computer and put in your Ubuntu bootable disk. Close the CD tray. Once you do that on your Windows personal computer, Restart your personal computer of Windows. And just wait till the time it restarts. Now, as you can see, when the Windows personal computer restarts, it actually directly boots in. It boots into the Ubuntu operating system installation. So just wait till it gives you some menu options. So what was happening at the moment was Ubuntu was loading all its files now we should get some menu options so the first step of Ubuntu installation is to select your language I've selected as English and then you need to click on install Ubuntu 
now every step once you click on continue takes a bit of time to process so don't think that Ubuntu is slow once Ubuntu is installed it is really super fast mark my words it is super fast the next step is to check whether your Windows personal computer has at least 4.5 GB or more space available on the hard disk second your Windows personal computer should be plugged to a power source now power source is very important because if your laptop drains out of power then your installation will abort immediately and you might face some problems so it is such a, it is highly recommended that you connect your windows personal computer to a power source now third it is not required but if you want to connect your windows personal computer to an internet connection you are free to do that now the best part of connecting to internet is that it will also install the updates while you are install while uh, while you are in installing your ubuntu os so it is not required i am not going to connect to the internet because there is no option to do that uh, but yes you can if you have a wireless connection there is an option on the top over here so if you want to you can definitely do that now if you want to install third party software you can do that too but i am not going to do that i am just going to click on continue and now after i click on continue as you can as i told you if you want to connect to the wireless network you can do from the top status bar or it gives us an option too so i'm going to go through the option and i would want to connect to a wireless network and i will select my wireless network and then type in the password now once you have typed the password just click on connect it takes a bit of time to connect to the internet now as you can see it shows us connection established so I have been connected to the internet now I need to again click on continue to proceed now you are asked what type of installation you want to do do you want to install Ubuntu alongside Windows 7 you can do that but uh, if you want to replace Windows 7 completely with Ubuntu, you can do that too. Now installing Ubuntu alongside Windows 7 will allow you to have your documents, music and other personal files kept on your Windows 7 and you can access them anytime uh, through Ubuntu. So that's one thing and the other thing is to replace Uba Windows 7 with Ubuntu. Now this will delete all your Windows 7 programs, files, document, everything that's there on your laptop or your personal computer now the third thing is to do something else that is manually decide your partitions and dual boot your windows personal computer and i would suggest you do that so just click on something else and then click on continue now this is one of the most important steps here we have been asked where we want to install our ubuntu operating system now as you can see I have got three drives that is SDA1, SDA2 and SDA3. Now all the three, uh, three drives are NTFS type and SDA3 is my C drive where my Windows has 7 has been installed. Now SDA1 as you all might be thinking is just approximately 100, 105 MB. Now you must be thinking why is it so small in size. Now SDA1 acts like a swap space for my Windows C drive. That is now I require some amount of swap space uh, because it helps in improving the performance of my windows when I am booting my windows from hibernation or I am booting my windows from sleep or standby. So it increases the boot up speed because I have allotted some amount of swap space which is 105 MB approximately in my case. Now SDA2 is nothing but my D drive which is completely free. Now if I want I can install my Ubuntu OS directly on this D drive but I would like to teach you guys to create a new partition from the C drive where your Windows is installed. So first you need to make out which is your C drive. Now I know that my C drive is SDA3 because I have compared the size of my C drive with the size of the C drive shown over here. Now if they both are same then it has to be your C drive. 
now select your c drive now before proceeding let me tell you we will need two drives to install linux ubuntu now one drive will be like around 1 gb that will act as a swap space for our ubuntu operating system and the second drive will be the drive where we will install the actual files of ubuntu operating system so select your c drive click on change now decrease its size by 1 gb now make sure you have to write the size of the partition in megabytes so since this is in megabytes i want to decrease the size of this partition by 1 gb so i will type in 216000 and then click on ok and then click on continue now it will create a new drive of 1 gb now this 1 gb drive will act as a swap space for our ubuntu operating system now as you can see we have got another free space that is 1.1 gb so just scroll down click on that free space and then click on add make it logical and then in use as select swap area and once you click on swap area just click on ok it will scan your disk and it should show swap over here the sdfi which has been just created which is 1.1 gb you can see it shows linux swap now select your c drive once again click on change and now you need to decide the size of your ubuntu operating system let's say i want to allot my ubuntu operating system 66 gb so what i will do is decrease the size of the c drive by 66 GB that will be something like 150 GB and make sure this is in megabytes click on OK click on continue and when you do that you should have another free space created it will scan the disk and now you can see you have a free space of 66 GB now this free space is the space where you will install your Ubuntu operating system just click on that free space click on add and then select extended for journaling file system in the use as location of for the new partition can be beginning in the mount point select the slash and then click on OK once you have done that just wait it will scan the disk once again and you should see SDSX where our Ubuntu operating system is getting installed will be 66 GB and the swap space is 1.1 GB that is SDA5 now click on install now and that's it your Ubuntu will start installing your operating system that is Ubuntu operating system now before installing your Ubuntu operating system select your time zone my time zone will be Kolkata that is in India click on continue select your keyboard layout I have selected English US then click on continue type in your name and type in your computer name so let's say I will make it as Nayan Ubuntu and pick up a username then choose the password for your Ubuntu operating system okay let's say I will select this one just confirm your password for Ubuntu operating system and then select whether you want Ubuntu to log in automatically or require password every time now you can encrypt your home folder also if you want to I don't usually do that and I select login automatically now click on continue once again now if you want you can select your display picture so let's say I click a photo and it will select my display picture as the photo which I have clicked click on continue
and if you want you can copy files from your windows that is the my documents folder on your windows now if you don't want to transfer files from the my documents folder of your windows then just uncheck this box and then just click on continue and once you do that Ubuntu's installation will start so you just need to wait for some time and once Ubuntu has installed I'll be back once the installation is complete you will get an option to restart your Windows personal computer so restart now and your Windows personal computer should start rebooting with some lines of code coming up okay so the code starts up and just wait for a few more seconds so let's remove our CD from the CD tray that's the CD and close your CD tray and click on enter once you do that Windows should finally restart and it will give us an option whether we want to run Ubuntu or your Windows XP 7 Vista whatever is installed on your Windows personal computer we will be running window Ubuntu with Linux select the first one the first Ubuntu option okay so Ubuntu as you can see has booted up and that boot up was very quick so go ahead and try out your Linux that is Ubuntu 12.0.4 or any OS of Ubuntu. That's it with this video guys. I hope you liked it. Please rate, comment, subscribe and visit techbarrack.com.